So we got uh, magnetic moment mu L is equal to EVR by 2. Now I am multiplying this equation with Me and dividing with Me. Therefore, mu L is equal to E by 2 Me into MeVR. What is this MVR? Angular momentum. So mu L is equal to E by 2 Me into L where L is equal to angular momentum. Here, the angular momentum is anti-clockwise, so such that we can write that mu L is equal to minus E by 2 Me into L. Therefore, mu L by L is equal to minus E by 2 Me. What is this mu L by L? Magnetic momentum per angular momentum is said to be gyromagnetic ratio. If you substitute this E and mass of electron, 1.6 in 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb and 9.1 in 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. If you substitute these values, we will get gyromagnetic ratio mu L by L is equal to 8.8 into 10 to the power of 10 coulomb per kg. But here L is equal to angular momentum. According to the basic properties of the Bohr's atomic model, angular momentum is quantized. Therefore, L is equal to nH by 2 pi. I am substituting this nH by 2 pi in this equation. Therefore, mu L by nH by 2 pi is equal to E by 2 Me. Therefore, mu L is equal to E by 2 Me into 2 pi by N H. So, repeat. So, mu L by N H by 2 pi is equal to minus E by 2 Me. Therefore, mu L is equal to minus E by 2 Me into N H by 2 pi. So, we will get e by 4 pi me into h. Is equal to mu l. Now I am substituting this all values where h is equal to Planck's constant. Therefore mu l is equal to e is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. h is equal to 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds. 4 into 3.14 into mass of electron is 9.1 in 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. If we substitute all these values, we will get the mu L value 9.27 into 10 to the power of minus 24 ampere meter square. So what is this 9.27 into 10 to the power of minus 24 am square? It is Bohr's magneton. So up to now we have seen the angular momentum of the electron, spin momentum of the electron and magnetic momentum of the electron by including all vectorial sum it has intrinsic momentum also. Now we are discussing about the moving coil galvanometer. So this is a rough sketch of the moving coil galvanometer. So what it contains, there are two magnetic fields. One is permanent magnet, one is applied magnet, north and south pole. Between these north and south poles of a magnet, one circular coil is designed and the circular coil has a central fixed point and the central fixed point is pivoted with a spring. So on that, to identify the reading, one fulcrum is like this, one metal mesh. So, uh, whenever the circular coil is rotated under the influence of the external magnetic field, in such cases, we can understand the deflection in the magnetic field by the pointer. This is the pointer. And this pointer is connected to a label which contains the amount of the magnetic field from a finite value to the finite value. 
so whenever this pointer makes stops at a particular point that is nothing but the magnetic field due to the applied field so what is the functioning of this moving coil galvanometer here when we apply the magnetic field to this circular coil inside the moving coil galvanometer yeah, due to the applied magnetic field it creates the turning in the circular coil when it creates the turning in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction the pivoted spring compresses itself so two forces are acting on the circular coil one is the applied magnetic force second one is the force due to the spring nothing but the mechanical force these two forces constitutes a torque But this torque is due to the magnetic field applied also. So therefore, torque is equal to M cross B. So it is IAB. But it contains N number of turns. That's why torque is equal to NIAB. This torque mechanically equal to K phi. In case of... Uh, Restoring force concept F is equal to Kx, where K is equal to spring constant, X is equal to displacement, F is equal to restoring force. Such like that, tau is equal to K phi. Now I am equating this NIAB to the K phi. K is spring constant, phi is deflection. Now we will find out the equation of the deflection by, by balancing these two. Therefore phi is equal to NAB by K into I. This NAB by K is said to be galvanometer constant which gives the sensitivity. which gives the sensitivity. What is the meaning of sensitivity is deflection per unit amount of current. Therefore, pi by i is equal to NAB by K, where pi is equal to deflection. The amount of deflection or deviation per unit current applied is equal to sensitivity. What is the use of this galvanometer? Galvanometer is a sensing device which can sense the direction of the current in a circuit as well as it can sense the small amounts of current that were passing through a circuit element. Now this Gaul galvanometer can be act as a meter as well as old meter. How? We can convert a galvanometer as a meter. A meter is a device which is useful to measure the amount of current flowing through the any element of the circuit or circuit. So current is equal to V by R. So we can write that V into 1 by R. See this 1 by R expression. 1 by R is the expression of the reciprocal of resistance in parallel combination. So such that if you want to convert a galvanometer as a meter we should connect a resistance in parallel to the galvanometer resistance. What is that resistance? That resistance is called shunt resistance. So the shunt resistance is equal to RS. So this is the galvanometer and it is connected to resistance of the galvanometer and the shunt resistance is connected to the resistance of the galvanometer in parallel. Then what about the effective resistance? 1 by R is equal to 1 by Rg plus 1 by Rs. Therefore it is Rg plus Rs by Rg Rs is equal to 1 by R. Therefore, R is equal to 
आर जी आर एस बाई आर जी प्लस आर एस सो दिस इज द एफेक्टिव रेसिस्टेंस वेन ए शेंट रेसिस्टेंस इज कनेक्टेड इन पैरल टू दि गैलोनोमीटर रेसिस्टेंस वेन इट इज कनेक्टेड देन दिस गैलोनोमीटर विल बी एक्ट एज अ मीटर नाउ ए गैलोनोमीटर इज एक्टिंग एज ओल्ट मीटर ओल्ट मीटर इज ए डिवाइस विच इज यूजफुल टू मेजर द ओल्टेज we can say that v is equal to ir voltage is equal to ir here it is r is multiplied with the current so this is possible when a, a resistor is connected in series to the galvanometer resistance therefore this is the galvanometer and the resistor connected to it is rg and another resistor in series it should be connected the r effective is equal to rg plus rs if rs or rg is much greater than rs then it will become rg plus rs is also equal to r so if a shunt resistance which is connected in series to the galvanometer resistor then it is acting as voltmeter so we got the equation of the deflection phi is equal to n a b by k into i so i am multiplying with v dividing with v on both sides phi by v is equal to n a b by k into i by v phi by v is nothing but deflection for unit voltage this is one of the method to find the sensitivity deflection per unit voltage so i by v is equal to 1 by r so it is na b by k into 1 by r is equal to phi by v so if you want to get the more sensitivity resistance should be less if resistance is more less sensitivity will be appeared in voltage so such like this uh, we can define the uses of moving coil galvanometer in this lesson we have started with uh, what is the magnetism what are the different uh, devices which are the applications of the magnetism we have seen the magnetic field at different points due to curved lines and linear lines and finally we have finished with moving coil galvanometer so with this concept this chapter is finished